I feel like when I first started racing, I didn't get the support from our local promoter. So, in my opinion, the biggest thing we did for Bear Shit Only, don't limit the cars. This is on cocky and arrogant shit. The Bear Shit Only, the best shit in racing. Big J Promotions, Bear Shit Only, only grows from here. Like, when you come into a race that I promote, I'm gonna always put my best foot forward for you. I'm always going to go in it with a plan. Listen, I don't go no real will toward anybody. Yeah. Because my journey went the way it was supposed to go. We had a hundred thousand dollar race, drug race, in the middle of a race that paid a hundred thousand to win. Like people ask me, what's next? Yeah. And naturally, taking the show on the road is something that that is definitely have been you know discussed. Because I've had races where people say, oh well, you can't come back to that. This and that with you. But I just do the biggest no time race in my opinion oh well, yeah it's ever it's I'm here and this thing i you know oh yeah i'm gonna talk my shit okay yeah that's what you're supposed to do that shit only is the best radio class and radio racing well, period yeah. bear shit is the premier class in racing but at the end of the day you know like anybody that was actually there they felt it in the air of just how different this race was. I usually, typically, before a race, like maybe a week before, a week of, mm -hmm. you know, that's when my phone started ringing. You know, that's when people hit, hit me up in my inbox. This race has literally been that for probably the last month or so, yeah. month and a half. I knew this one was going to be different. All right, we got the... The man, the OG, really, young OG at that, shoot. Definitely young. <laughs> Definitely young. Big Jake in the building, man. Hey, first, I appreciate you for inviting me to your house, man. Wait for me with open arms, man, for real. Yeah. Um, it's all good. Yes, sir. Texas, you was born in Texas? Yes, sir. Born and raised in Dallas, Texas. Dallas? North Dallas. North Dallas. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. So, how did you um kind of, like, get started with the promoting? Like... I mean, my promotion journey started kind of as a racer. Mm -hmm. I mean, it kind of started because, you know, I was really into racing. I was really into grudge racing. And it was this, this I don't know if it was an app, website or whatever, called grudgeracer.com back in the day. Real popular, but it was an East Coast thing. It wasn't mm -hmm. a Texas thing, you know. I yeah. would go in there, go back and forth with quite a few people. Mm -hmm. You know, Tony Bonds was one of those people that I went right. back and forth with quite a bit. Yeah. You know, I ended up kind of racing him. I can't remember where our first race was that I raced Tony. Mm -hmm. I believe it might have been Crandall. Crandall, okay. Yeah, the old Dallas Raceway off of mm -hmm. 175. It didn't stick around that long. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, promoting wise, you know, I would have to go over there. To kind of get the racing that I wanted, right, right. right? So, right. kind of like get your name out there, market yeah, a little mean, bit better. I yeah. mean, that's kind of how it worked. I mean, I had to go over there to kind of get the races that I wanted. The kind of races that I wanted was grudge racing. Mm -hmm. You know, it was kind of, you know, I wanted to race certain people. I wanted to race right. certain names, you know, to push my name out there. Right, and, right, right. You know, and I grabbed the the biggest name in the game first, yeah. which was Tony Bonds. You know. Mm -hmm. Beat the dog shit out of him, you know. Wait, what car did you have at the time? At that time, I had my Camaro that I got from my dad when I was 17, 18 years old. Okay, okay. And what car did Tony have or drive? Tony oh. had, at that time, I believe it was a Corvette. Corvette, yeah, okay. It was a blue Corvette. Okay, okay. So so who kind of like got you into racing? Like My pops got me into racing because we would go to... The drag ship pretty much every Friday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. We would go to Kennedale, which is Texas Raceway, every Friday night. No right. matter what they had out there, we was there. No matter what. We was always there. You know, Sunday, we would go out to Yellow Belly, which I pretty much grew up at Yellow Belly. Okay. You know, yeah. like every single Sunday, I was at Yellow Belly, and pretty much the whole city was too. 
Yeah, I hear, uh, it was, well, I've only been down here for two years, but I hear a lot about Yellow Belly. That's where everybody kind of got started at. So. I mean, everybody around here pretty much got started at Yellow Belly. Yeah. Some people still go to Yellow Belly to this day. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Kennedale, was that like, that was a real popular track back here oh, back yeah. in the day. I mean, too. Friday nights, you know, it was going on on Friday nights. Yeah. You know, they had the same hour, 6 to 12. You know, mm -hmm. they had a strict curfew. But oh, they yeah. had a lot of racing. But that was back when the slick days. Yeah. You know, maybe Willie Bar, stuff like that. So you can race during the day. It wasn't no issue to race right. during the day. Whereas now it's more of a radio world and you want excellent conditions. So mm -hmm. usually you don't typically race during the day, especially in the South. Right, right, right. Man, it's crazy that you mentioned GrudgeRacer.com or GrudgeRacer because I got it in my notes right here. Uh, so. What, did a lot of promoters like show you love back in the day? Like pretty what? much, I mean, pretty much everybody showed me love back in the day. You okay. know, yeah. I mean, how it turned out about my first race, you know, I was supposed to have a race here mm -hmm. and didn't. I couldn't get the date that I wanted, you know, so I end up just like searching around. I pretty much emailed every single track around here, mm -hmm. around here. But I wouldn't get no no replies, no nothing. I would call, get nothing. So mm -hmm. I ended up, you know, branching out a little bit, you know, hitting up people in Louisiana, yeah. Oklahoma, and I got one reply and one reply only, and that was with, um, in Gilliam, which is close to Shreveport, mm -hmm. Thunder Road Raceway, and that's pretty much where it started. That's when you had your first like official like event. Yep, that was my first race. And what year was it? That was 2015, I believe. Okay, so yeah, 2015. Okay, so, so you so next year would make my 10 year anniversary of promoting racing. Right, right. Okay, okay. So, uh, was that your first race? Was it pretty successful? As far as like that people that particular race had pretty much anybody who's anybody of Quills racing. You right. name them, they was at that race. Mm. You know, the race didn't go particularly how I expected it to go for the simple fact that I don't believe that they kind of knew how to handle a race that size oh, you know okay. and that's no disrespect to them I mean I wasn't it was a lot of things that went on that I didn't really understand or or that I really didn't have the concept of how to throw a race right because right, right. the East Coast had already transitioned to radios whereas our locals myself included were still running slicks yeah and probably had bars and all that so yeah. we show up there you know on our 28 w's you know looking mm -hmm. to race looking to have a good time whereas they all showed up on radios yeah you know the track had informed me before the race that they can prep for radios which in the end they could not prep for radios oh, so it okay. was uh in that sense it was kind of it was kind of tricky mm -hmm. you know in but, you know, as far as the people that was there, the atmosphere, everything like that, it was big. It was a big race, you know. Yeah. And, and what that race did for me was give me the credibility to basically go anywhere I wanted to at that point. Right. Because some of these same tracks that would not hear me out, they was contacting me at that point. Right, right, So right. I basically could kind of do what I wanted to do. But I ended up going there, I believe, and it was it might have been the Darlington days next. Man, I feel like Texas is kind of like, they kind of like just started like getting up to date with like the East Coast. Oh, yeah. In, in a way, you know what I'm saying? No, for sure. Like, not, like a couple years ago. What's your opinion on that? Yeah, That's just my opinion. No, but. no, for sure. 100%. I mean, for the longest, we was actually still a slick, you know, mm -hmm. maybe Willie Bars. You know, we considered like 29s kind of like a small tire. Whereas mm -hmm. on the East Coast, they consider 28s, which is the same thing pretty much as a 275. Right. As far as the size, you know, a small tire. Right. But, you know, yeah, no, like we were still doing, some of us, some of us were still doing plate systems and, mm -hmm. you know, willy bars, <laughs> like uh, digital six ignition boxes. You know, yeah, they really advanced things on the East Coast and we was kind of a little slower to catch up. Yeah, yeah. But um, so, so back to that. So, what promoters did you look up to at the time? At that, or even, or even right now. Just. 
I mean, at that particular time, I would say I reached out to, to Mike a lot because the first race that I went to on the East Coast was one of his races. Right. You right. know, so, you know, he was very receptive of all the questions that I had, had to ask because in the beginning, I mean, I, I didn't know as much. So, right. you know, I asked him a bunch of questions. I asked Dog a bunch of questions who was also at my race. And I learned, I learned a lot from both of them. Right, you right. know, to where I kind of incorporated into some of the things that I did, but you know, it was a lot of stuff that I just had to learn on my own, just basically mm. by going through it. Right, you right, know? right. And like every single race, even to this day, I try to learn something to help me on my next race. Right, right. You know, that's just it, you know, I'm never too prideful to ask questions or kind of feel like, you know. I'll never know everything. Right, right, right. So, like, I'll just, I kind of take my notes and, you know, put stuff in my head as far as, hey, I could do this and use this going forward that will help my race to be better and more successful. Right, right. Did you kind of, like, learn off the other promoter's mistake, too, with that? I mean, somewhat, because, I mean, at the end of the day, I did want to kind of do my own thing. Right, right. You know, and, like, as far as, like, structuring my races a certain way, you know, I did kind of take a little bit from people here and there, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, you know, I kind of made the decision, especially once I started doing the darlings and stuff. Yeah. You yeah. know, doing it on the East Coast, coming from Texas, doing races pretty much in the backyard of other pretty big promoters. It was mm -hmm. tough, you know, but I made a decision then that I was going to structure my races on free entry shootouts. Right. And right. that's kind of how I got started. Because my Bear Fest days in Darlington was pretty big races. Yeah. You know, not like, for like sure. they was they was huge races. There's there's no doubt about that. The first one was, was big and the second one was just just uh, uh, just it's just huge. Yeah. It was huge. But again I I built those races off free entry shootouts. Man, I remember the one in Darlington you did, man. Oh, uh, the one with cognac, uh, or live action, whatever y'all wanna call them. Uh, who else you had at? Uh, the other Malibu, uh, Salty Bitch and them drive, Ricky. Yeah. Uh, Karma. Mo, uh, yeah, Karma, Mario. And Bumpy, yep. Yeah, that was a big event. Yeah, that was going to be, yeah. that was going to be the biggest race no. as far as drag, yeah. as far as grudge race and grudge racing. For sure. And those two could have got that race off. That was going to be a big race. Dang, so, I know we travel all the way to Mississippi, man, and as soon as they about to get in the paint, Mario had sold the car. Right, right, right. Crazy, man. That was that was, that was was a new one for me. That yeah. was absolutely a new <laughs> for one. For real. I thought I had seen everything at the track at that point until I seen that. So what was like the wildest thing you ever seen at your, well, yeah, yeah. What was like one of the wildest things you ever seen at your race? I mean, wildest, I mean, I mean, that's hard to really say the wildest thing. Yeah. I will say this, though. I mean, as far as my races over time, I feel like I have gotten some of the biggest races, the biggest grudge races off at some of my races. I have been very blessed in that sense that it has been a lot of big time grudge races at my For races. Sure. You know, we just had one this past weekend, and like even in the ra in the races in the past, I have had a lot of big time grudge races. I've had a lot of them locked in. Some of them didn't happen. For sure. But, you know, as far as getting the lock-in, promoting, you know, mm -hmm. the race to actually two different races to the point to where they're okay with locking in a race for my race. Right, You right. know, and me doing it, you know, the promoting, you know, the promoting way, mm -hmm. you know. And I have been fortunate enough to get a lot of big-time races locked in. Yeah, before we go to, like, that big race, dude, uh... First off, congratulations, bro. I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that in a few minutes. Uh, was it always a dream for you to promote, or it just kind of like, man, just I'm, I'm telling you, like I really had no intentions of promoting at all. Yeah. The only reason why I did is after I went to the East Coast, and I was at that race, and you know, people knowing me there, mm -hmm. and like showing me so much love, I get back, and I'm like, you know. That's nothing uh, to discredit the promoters that we had here at the yeah, time, sure, we, sure. you know, but it wasn't the kind of race that I had just left. Right, right, you know? right. And I said to myself, like, 
why why don't I do something that kind of mirrors that right here at home? Right, right. And that's kind of how the journey got started, you know, to where I, I didn't want every time that I wanted to actually race like that, I didn't want to have to drive 15 hours to do it. So I made the decision that, hey, you know, let's try something here and let's just see how it goes, you know. But And it was something like a, a spare the moment type deal. Mm. It really wasn't something that I had been thinking, oh, man, I want to promote races, I want to promote races. I didn't want to promote races because I, I wanted to race, you know. That's right, what I right. wanted to do. I wanted to do a lot of racing, and I figured if I could get those kind of races that they had over there at home, Back at the crib, yeah. then I could race a lot like I wanted to, you right. know. And that's kind of how it played out, which in that particular race, that's another one that I got to race locked in that in my opinion at that time was the biggest race in grudge race. Yeah, I already know what you're gonna say. You bro. know? Yeah, yeah. Birdman and Shadow. That race, mm -hmm. in my opinion, at that particular time was the biggest race in grudge racing. Right, right. You know, it didn't get off. However, as a promoter, getting that race locked in was important to me. Right. And just as soon as I announced the race, when I talked to both parties, they didn't hesitate one bit to lock that race in mm. at that particular race and that particular track. So, I mean, it's just it's just one of those things to where it happened because I had kind of been other places. Right, you know, right. I had kind of put my name out there, put my brand out there to where people felt like they could trust me and come to a race that I was promoting because mm. it was going to be exactly how I said it was going to be, which that's important to me. Bro, I feel like all your races had some legendary grudge races, bro. I never forget the JR Grand Sh Sunshine. Big race, huge this race. <laughs> Did you give him a break or the back time? I gave I gave him the break. Yeah. Which you right. know it was it was kind of crazy how that worked out. Yeah. You know he had a brand new car. You know this wasn't a race really that we had locked in ahead of time. Yeah. This was a race that kind of got up at the track, just like the race with Fletch and Justin. Yeah. You know, like you don't have to lock in a race beforehand to get a big race off. Right. If right, you right. got two people who's willing to go. They gonna go. Right. And right. Mario is always willing to go and I know I'm always willing to go. And that's kinda how that race came about. Right. Man, you had some man, just looking back, bro, you had some legendary moments at your race, bro. Like all your races really. Like you don't fail, bro. You don't fail. Uh I mean, it's it's easy because I come from racing, you know. Mm -hmm. I I know what the fans wanna see. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the racers themselves put their trust in me that I'm going to give them the platform that they need to perform, you know, because at the end of the day, they know I'm going to put my best foot forward For sure. in order to do that, you know. So it's just one of those things to where, like, I've been blessed to have so many big races at my race, yeah. you know, but it didn't just happen overnight. For sure. You know For what I'm sure. saying? It, it happened because, you know, when I tell you, honestly, I used to go back and forth with these dudes on Grudge Race every God damn day. Mm -hmm. We went back and forth every damn day. But I stood in the paint. For sure. You know, in the first race that I got locked in, they said Tony Bonds was coming to Dallas Raceway. You know, mm -hmm. I threw my bait in the water. And I hooked his ass real fast. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. I told him I would gladly run him small block to small block, one system to one system. Yeah. You know. But I made sure I threw in the fact that I got two systems on the car. Mm. But I never ran two systems. I always right. ran one. Because right. he didn't know that. You know. But I hooked him so easy. Yeah. And the rest was history. You know, after I kicked him in the ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yeah. know. It took off from there. Bro. Um, I don't think I was around. Was I around? I don't remember seeing that. That was, I, I was, that was a while ago. That was before I knew it. Throwing the race was. So what year was that? That probably had to be, if my first race was in 2015, that probably had to be maybe 2013, 2013, 2013 2014. 
that was before I ever put okay. put you know paint on that car and everything. You know, mm -hmm. like that was a while ago, but that started my grudge race. You know, history right there. Right, twenty thirteen started your grudge race. I, like, like that was my first one, I believe. That was my first grudge race. It's definitely one my first big one. Right, right. You know, right, to right. where I had a race locked in with somebody who's a legend in the game. Cause you know, Tony is a legend in the game. Nah, There's no, sure. no doubt about that. You know, he's, he, you know, he's up there with anyone, if not above everyone. So you had to go through a lot of adversity just to get kind of like where you are today. A lot of struggling adversity. Or, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like it wasn't. It, but you I said mean, you wasn't easy. So that's nah, it, it was. None of it was ever easy because you know, especially throwing races. You know, having cars two grudge races like mm -hmm. I had. Like it's not easy to get cars to the point to where you feel like they're fast enough to race a guy who's the man. Because sure. that, I mean, like especially at that time, Tony was the man. For sure. You know, sure. like there, there's nothing you can take from him. Like he's been around for like ever, bro. Like, like that prime time, they was you know they was on top yeah. of the game. You know, yeah, they was on top of the game. So what? So what's the hardest part about promoting the race? Like some of the cons, it can be more than one. I mean, what? for me, you know, the hardest thing is just like just dealing with so many different people, so many different egos as far as yeah. racers and fans. You know. You will never be able to please everyone. Mm. In the beginning, I felt myself trying to please everyone, you know, and in doing so, there was times where hard decisions needed to be made, and sometimes I would take the soft way. I wouldn't make the hard decisions. Right. I, right, right. I, I kind of somewhat shied away from it, or maybe ran away from making the hard decisions. But as I got, you know, further along in the game. And having someone like Dog, who I consider someone like a mentor, who I can mm -hmm. go to and ask questions, he told me just always stand firm, Jake. Always make your decisions and stand on them, you know. But like going forward, I got to the point to where I kind of took myself out of the equation, you know, as far as hiring a tech man. And whatever that tech man say, that goes. Mm -hmm. You can't come to me and say, hey, you know, well, what about this? Or what about that? You can't talk to me about that because that's not my that. I don't make those decisions. My tech man right. makes those decisions. You know, when it comes to running a shootout, like I did back in my Darlington days, my Memphis days, I, you know, I have dog make those decisions. You can't come to me and say, Jake, hey, what about this? What about that? Because I'm, I, I don't make those decisions. Right. Dog right. makes those decisions. Whatever he says, that absolutely yeah. goes. You know, it's not one of those situations where I can overrule him. I would never overrule him because that's the position that I put him in. So if I was going to overrule him, why not just do it myself? Right, right, you know, exactly, I, exactly. I don't. So that's what he was, you know, that's what he's brought here to do, and he's going to make those decisions. He can tell you to this day. I've had situations with people who I feel like his family. Mario, for example. We mm. have, we have, you know, somewhat of an issue or whatever as far as that race. It's nothing I can do. Whatever dogs say at the end of the day, that's what goes. Right, And that's right. just how it is. But people will respect you more, you know, if, if you handle it that way. Because, I mean, as long as I'm neutral in the whole thing, you can't say, hey, well, Jake taking sides, mm. Jake, Jake playing favoritism. Right. You can't say that because Jake don't make none of those decisions. Right. You know, right. and even as far as my rules, I write all of my rules, but I pay someone else to enforce them. You know, mm, that makes sense. and they enforce them and whatever they say goes on those rules at every single race, no matter what. That's what goes. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not it's not something like that. Oh, we got gray areas and stuff like that. We we tend not to have gray areas. Right. right. You know, we we tend to put it pretty much in black and white. If you fit these rules, you race. If you don't, you don't. And that's just all it is to it. You know, that's the easiest yeah. thing to do as far as from my standpoint. Bro, that is so smart. All you doing is just providing a platform for the race. Well, you build your name up, of right. course, but then you got a big platform, and you just hire people to do your work. Okay, so that yeah, that, that, I mean, that, because that's just the easiest way to do it. You, if mm -hmm. I take myself out of the equation for the most part, you know, I can kind of sit back and enjoy the fruits of my labor. Right. Because at the end of the day, you know, like I do real promoting. Right, right, this, right. This right. isn't, this isn't, and this is no disrespect to anyone. This isn't no TV shit. This isn't no, this is nothing like that. For I sure, promote sure. races. 
Okay. And I promote my ass off, you know. Yeah. And how I promote is I push that flyer in your goddamn face <laughs> yeah, every right. single day. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, you won't be able to say, well, I didn't get to see the flyer. Yeah, you've seen the flyer. You've sure. seen the flyer a bunch of times. For sure. You know, and that's how I promote races. So, some of the pros, I'm assuming, I, I'm assuming some of the pros, I'm going to let you answer it, but some of the pros are probably just, I seen so many. I had to stay off Facebook all day the last couple of days because all I've been seeing is appreciate you, Jake. Good race, Jake. Uh, I'm coming back, Jake. Book your hotel for next year. Like so, that like, got to be like some somewhat of a satisfaction. Man, it's, it's 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 all truly a blessing. I mean, this particular race, you know, was without a doubt my biggest race. You know, and I knew it was going to be my biggest race. Mm-hmm. I had the confidence and the belief in what I was doing. That I knew it was going to be huge, For sure. you know, and like going in, like me and you and Dominique, mm-hmm. we sat in Orangeburg and we discussed this, mm-hmm. did we? Yes, sir. We yes, discussed sir. it, you know, and it was a Wait, who got you that hundred thousand dollar idea? <clears throat> you, you definitely did because, <laughs> you like, <laughs> you know, like Dominique kind of wanted to wait, and I understand why. Man, we might be dead next, next, next I year, I mean, bro. and I told him it was the perfect opportunity to do it. You know, we just come off a race that was big, mm-hmm. right? In March. It was a big race. My March races had surpassed my September races, which people don't understand. You know, it was time for to get that March, that September race, excuse me, back on top. Right, right. And I was like, it's the perfect opportunity to go ahead and do it now. Because we still have months in advance. Mm-hmm. And I know my core group of bear shit racers, you know, they're they're going to always support the cause because we do a hell of a job of putting them in a position to succeed. Right. You know, we put them in a position to race for a good amount of money where, you know, they ain't have to spend you no know, thousands and thousands of dollars to do so. You know, they spend enough. Right, you know, right, that's what right. I've always said. You know, the races, they always, they spend enough. So, if we can give them a platform to where they can run on a Friday night for a big, substantial amount of money, mm-hmm. you know, let's go ahead and do it. Because at the end of the day, you know, like we discussed then, 100000 you know, 100000 at that point, it's like, it's it's a good it's a good amount of money. Shit. You know, that's just the truth. It's a good amount of money. What you mean? Right. You know, that's a good amount of money. And like me and Dominique had set we we never really like put it in like concrete mm-hmm. but we had said at some point we need to do a hundred thousand dollars. And I told him, Well, if we're gonna do a hundred thousand dollars, all we pretty much we need to ask the racers to do is double what they put in for bear shit only. Right. And we double what we put in, you know. And the buy-in was twenty five hundred for the people that don't know. The buy-in was twenty five hundred dollars okay. for this particular bear shit only race, right. whereas we had been doing twelve fifty, and it was fifty thousand dollars to win, you right. know. But we always push these guys to where an hour before the shootout, the girls race each other. Mm-hmm. You know, some do, some don't. But we we both said to ourselves. Twenty five hundred dollars. Most of them will probably do that and not bat an eye, and they absolutely did, you know. And it and it took off. Just saying one hundred thousand to win on the flyer is big, whereas we actually had a hundred thousand dollars to win. Right. right. And we had over forty cars sign up. You know what I'm saying? We had over forty cars sign up, and we had a second chance race where the winner won. $25,000. $25,000. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, it's, this race was just bigger than anything I ever imagined, but we only get bigger. We will yeah. get bigger because we're going to make sure some of the problems that we had at the last race, we don't have at this race. So, what would, like, for the people that don't know and couldn't be there, uh, what were some of the issues that we had and we can, like, kind of, like, better... For next year. I know you made a post on Facebook. Yeah. And um I'm gonna implement that in here too. But um what are some issues that we're gonna fix for next year and how you go go by moving forward? I mean, like for me the the biggest thing is, you know, as far as the show for the fans. The show mm-hmm. for the fans, getting them in as fast as we possibly can 
so they can get in the stands, get where they're going to be. To enjoy the race is important to me. Yeah. You know, I will say that we kind of, my, I'll say I did. You know, I kind of wasn't prepared for the crowd that we got. What, I, for I, real? I, I knew it was going to be big, don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, I just okay. never assumed or anticipated that we would have to close the spectator side all together by 8.30 or 9 o'clock. Right, that was crazy. You know, like we had yeah. to close that side down so early. So at that point, we have to send everyone over to the pit side. Right, right. And it just to the point to where we had got let it get out of hand way, way too much. Like we have the parking to accommodate people. Yeah. You know, but how they had to do it because we had let it get to that point is they had to go down the return road just to get to the field. Right, it was crazy. Which, <laughs> which if we would have plan well i'm sorry if i would have properly planned it would have never had to happen like that right you know so i'll take 100 percent of the responsibility of that and going mm -hmm. forward i assure you that i will have the proper people in place that will help manage that situation a lot better mm -hmm. so as far as that aspect of it the racing aspect of it you know the only thing i would say it it just kind of I wouldn't even say drug out because it was a lot of racing Friday night. Mm -hmm. It was a ton of racing, a lot of good racing. Yeah, uh, too. Wednesday you know, and Saturday were good racing. Yeah, it, you know, like it was, it was like from Friday, we knew we had six rounds, mm -hmm. right? You know, our plan is always to to finish Saturday morning. Right, you know? right. But as we going on through the night, I'm just realizing that's just not going to happen. We had a few right. mishaps, you know. All downs, wrecks, stuff like that, right. which you can't really plan for. You know, once you kind of throw them for a loop and that kind of stuff happens, you kind of got to adjust. Mm -hmm. And when we got to the point to where we had eight cars, to me, that was a perfect time, you know, for intermission. Mm -hmm. That was a perfect time to where, hey, we'll finish the eight because it was truly an elite group of eight that we're going to finish tomorrow. Because we could easily run the final or kept racing and ran the final at 10 a.m. when nobody's watching. Right, right. You know, but I know my racers was tired. I know I was tired. You know, I know my media was tired. I know the fans was tired. Mm -hmm. You know, why not get some rest, you know, kind of regroup and finish the next day. Right. You know, when everybody's kind of fresh or a little bit fresher because I know we was all tired. Nah, for sure. I'm still, I'm still to tired. Recover. You know, I'm still tired. I still, I'm still right. trying to recover, bro. <laughs> so, I mean, like as far as the racing aspect, that's the only change that I will, you know, kind of implement for the, for the next race is that we'll, you know, we'll start the bear shit only Friday night, but we'll get down to eight. And right. We'll finish the eight on Saturday. Nice, nice, nice. But so after doing this race, bro. I'm pretty sure you, it's a lot of eyes on you, bro. It's a lot of eyes on you. Like, how does it feel? In my opinion, bro, in my opinion, and me and Mr. Ford was talking about this thing Monday, yesterday. Mm -hmm. This was the biggest no-time race ever, in my opinion, and his opinion. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm so, a little biased, so, of course, I would say the same. Yeah. But, you know, to me, you know, when you kind of look back on a race, you know, it's, does it hit all the marks? And for mm -hmm. me, it hit all the marks. You know, like, that's all I see on Facebook right now. Yeah, I had to get off. I, yeah, I stayed off Facebook. That's all so. I see on Facebook and Instagram. So what, and what made this, I ain't mean to cut you off, but what made this race so big, in my opinion, bro, you had no time races, you had, a lot of some shootout, a lot, like the class racers, and you had no prep racing. Right. right. So, bro. Right. I mean, you kind of had the best of both worlds, but you would not believe some of the names that I have had inbox me about the next race. Don't spill the beans. Give me some. I'm not going to do that. Ah. I'm not going to. I would not do that. For sure. For but sure. For sure. It is a lot of, you know, there's a lot of racers that are interested in coming to run with us with bear shit on them. Next year. With next year. So, so, I, uh, did you see the post Stevie Faz made on my page? I seen it, you know, which yeah. Stevie's, Stevie's a really good friend of mine. For sure. You know, one thing I know about him and his competitiveness is up there with anyone. For sure. You know, and I know this appeals to him. Mm -hmm. You know, like, 
our races that we just had this this past weekend, there's not a one that said I won't be back. Not there's sure. not a one who said, man, I didn't like this form of racing. Every single one that I talked to, and I talk and I try to go around and pretty much talk to a lot of people. Yeah. You know, they're all excited. The only thing that they don't like is they got to wait six months to do it again. Yeah, for sure. Know, for sure. But that's kind of how I have structured the bear shit only races, six months apart. You know, it's not something that we want to water down. This is just something yeah, me sure. and Dominique, who, you know, who is a big reason why bear shit is what it is. You know, I could not have done this without him. I wouldn't do it without him. Yeah. You know, is he does, he probably does more than I do in form of running the race. Sure. You know, dealing with the racers. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, we have built something that is huge, but it only gets bigger. It only gets better. You know, it's a, it's on us to make sure it stays that way. You know, yeah. I know racers probably want to run more often, right. but at the end of the day, to me, it's appealing when it's two times a year. Yeah, because it gives people time to prep. You don't want to have it like five times a nah, year because it, it, it makes it feel like it's too easy. That's right. right. That's, that's, just, that's just not what we want to do. We want to do it twice a year. And we want to continue to have it as big as it is now. And it's going to continue to grow. You know, it's going to continue to grow and continue to get to the point to where, you know, who knows where to be? Who knows where to end up? But right. I know right. from the people that I have talked to, it's a lot of people that's interested in running with the bear shit on the guy. Because it's a great group of racers. For sure. For sure. They don't complain. They don't cry. They don't whine. You know, like, I know you've seen stuff out there, but that's not coming from my racers. My racers, you know, they absolutely love this shit. For sure. You know, we love it. And it was, that was honestly the best racing that I have seen at a race that I've ever been to. And I've yeah. been to a lot of good races. For sure. You know what I'm saying? But this race, like, we had side-by-side -side hell of a passes. You know, we had races that was just, that was just huge, big races. You know, them, them boys put on a hell of a show for us. And, man, I, I can't be more thankful or grateful for every single one of them. And it's one of them races that live up to the hype. Like, you know how you have, not throwing shade at nobody, you know how you have some races that's, it'll be big on social media. Right. And right. then you get there, it's like, oh, yeah, it's all right. It was, right. It, it was good, you know, right. but you expect it to be uh, better, right. you know. Right. This one of them races where you kind of, like, in my opinion, I don't see, like, how the hell can you get any better than this, bro? Right. I mean, like, I can't see it, bro. I mean, I can see it, but like, it's gonna how? be hard. I mean, it's how? gonna be hard. You know, that's the thing. Like going into a race, I can get the feel of how I believe it's going to go. Yeah. And I knew this probably two months ago. Mm -hmm. You know that this race was about to be big. This race is about to be huge. And I would tell everyone that will listen, if we pull this off, like I told you, if we pull this race off, this shit going to change my life. And it has. Mm. You know, like... How so? Like, like, I mean, like, you wouldn't believe how many people, not as far as racers, potential sponsors, who has hit me up, and they want to be in the Big J business. Mm. Because the Big J business... You know, it's, 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 it's something that is appealing to a lot of people right now. And that's not on no cocky shit or arrogant shit. But being in the big Jake business is a good thing. It's a beautiful For thing. Sure. You know, so, like, honestly, it gets bigger. It gets better because my racers and the people who support me want to see it bigger. They want to see it better because, you know, they believe in what I'm doing. For sure. You know, they believe in what we are doing. You know, like, the feedback that we have gotten, when I say we, that me and Dominique has been through the roof. You know, just to get gratitude for the hard work that you do, it means something. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Like, like they have uplifted us both to the point to where, you know, yeah, we ready to get started on the next one to make it better for everyone, to make it better for the races, better experience for the fans. You know, and like, honestly, just the whole atmosphere, the vibe, everything from the track this past weekend was electric. You know, Crazy, it, was, it was like, it, you know, like, yeah, we talk shit, we do all that, but it was like, it's like a family affair. 
For sure. Everyone sure. hanging out with each other, everyone cooking, everyone eating with each other, For that sure. kind of stuff, man. It was just like, it was a fun time, you know? And yeah, no, it's going to be six months for the next one, but it's something that we all can look forward to. It gives you time to promote and get the energy back up. It's well, also, yeah. So, yeah. so how are you and Dom end up coming together as a unit and kind of putting this thing together? I mean, like, like Dominique, like, obviously I would see him around at races, you know, he loved this shit. Yeah. You know, he got a passion for it that is like second to none. And for he sure. works his ass off. For sure. You know, so like I would see him kind of hanging around, you know, and then they would potentially go and throw a race. You know, they had a race that they was promoting, mm-hmm. you know, but like it was always the case like on Friday nights, we kind of figure out what we want to do on Friday nights. What, we, what can we do on Friday nights that will bring the crowd in here? Mm-hmm. You know, and we started with eight cars. The elite, you know, elite, elite eight. yeah, like yeah. elite eight. We had yeah. like we had like eight cars. You know, it went it went cool, went went smooth. Then the next race, I think we had sixteen cars, mm-hmm. right? And that's kind of when we started calling it bear shit, right? Because this was the the, the fastest, you know, folks on twenty eight two seventy five. Mm-hmm. You know which. If people don't know the rules for bear shit on, it is no time cars on the 275 with doors. Doors probably 275. And that's pretty much it. You know. If you think you're a bit dog, the final balls get in. If you are a truly a bear, you will come here and do bear shit. For sure. As simple as that. You know, and like this past weekend, this past weekend was truly the vision that we both saw. You know. And, and seeing it, bringing it to life to what it is today, is truly mm-hmm. amazing. Nah, you know, sure. like and and it honestly is amazing because it's a great group of racers. I don't know how many times I had to say this, but I'm telling you, the For group sure. of bear shit only racers, man, those guys are the absolute best. They don't cry, they don't complain, man. They just race. They love racing, mm-hmm. you know. And a lot of the racers are some of my biggest sponsors. You know, they believe in what we are doing. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, they they want to continue to push it, and let's just see where it goes. Right, right. You know, and I believe we can go to the moon if we just stay the course and keep on doing what we're doing now. Then yeah, uh, another thing, bro, uh, when I go to some of these races out of towns, and no, that's no disrespect to them, they car count don't be as high in the fact that you have 40, but that's right. SP's volume, bro. Right. And another thing, I forgot you had um Frankie Taylor there, and he a pro mile racer. Right. So, bro, you had we you had it all. We had a yeah. radio versus the world versus a pro mile world yeah. champion doing the best two out of three. We gotta finish that too, Jay. You know, absolutely. Yeah, you, and you know that's that's it's, it's funny you hit on car count, okay? And people say, well, you know, well you pay this kind of money, okay? Of course you're gonna have a lot of cars. Mm-hmm. However. My first race here that was supposed to happen in March of 2020, mm-hmm. you know, well, my first race at Extreme Raceway Park, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. it was 2020, right? Those, those, you know, those payouts was, I think they were $5,000. You know, that's, that, that's where it started at. It was $5,000. But I probably had more racers there than probably I had this weekend. Like really? those car counts and those and, and, and those particular shootouts, yeah, was yeah. every single one of them had over thirty cars. <clears throat> Excuse me, every single one of them had over thirty had cars. More than that, though, Jay. Nah, I mean, like in my and like I'm talk when I say over thirty, I'm talking probably close to forty. You know, it was probably close to forty in each okay, and okay. every single shootout that we did that weekend, and they were only like five thousand to win. So Damn, it's, I it, thought you it, gave away more than that, Jay. No, nope, my first race here, you know, which, you know, I, you know, I look back at my flyers, yeah. you know, to kind of yeah. get a sense of how it started, you know, the transition to where we are now. But yeah, no, those were five thousand dollars to win. But when I tell you, the place was flooded. The place was flooded. It was it was almost forty cars in each shootout. Cause I'm looking at one right here, three years ago. Big J promotion, March Man. This is the video I did. It was seventy five hundred dollars to win. Yep, two seventy five. Yeah, yeah, it was seventy five hundred because I had did five thousand. The first, yeah. I was like, 
you know, because that was probably my, that was probably my, because March Mania started in Memphis. <coughs> yeah. You know, yeah. so that was probably the first March Mania that was, that I had actually here at Extreme Raceway. And yeah. that was, that was basically a transition from, you know, I'm a, and instead of doing 5,000 to win, I'm going to do 7,500 to win. And then it progresses yeah. to where it is today. Yeah, I'm looking at the flyer right here. Yep. And that race was huge, man. That race was that race was stupid, stupid. This was one year ago, sixteen count, dirt shit only. This was a year ago. And you gave away it don't say it don't say how much you gave away on here. Probably twenty five thousand. Twenty five, yeah. They, yeah. Oh it was, yeah, it yep. was, yeah, yeah, it was. Damn. You know, to go from yeah. struggling to get eight cars for, you know, the yeah. Friday deal uh -huh. to having 40 plus mm -hmm. this past weekend, it was, man, it's amazing. And it would have been more, but of course we, we lost a couple cars along the way, which, for you sure. know, it, it happens, especially okay. if you if you start testing on Tuesday. You know, it happens. But we also had cars that showed up and said, hey, you know, can we get embarrassed shit only? Of course you can. Yeah. You know? And they signed up. As long up as you got the team. money and, the, and you as, fit as the rules. As long as you at yeah. that at that driver's meeting with your twenty five hundred dollars, you can get in. Right, right. You know, but I feel like um, and then it was crazy because like I got that Tuesday like around five, and it wasn't packed Tuesday, but they was there Tuesday, bro. Right. That's Wednesday, true. it bro, it was crazy yeah, it on was. Wednesday. It definitely was. I mean, I think I think they had maybe. 40 cars that, 40 something cars that tested on Wednesday, but they had yeah. a bunch more that just was basically parking. And you said you sold how many, te 100 tech cars on, on that? On Thursday, Thursday? Yeah. I believe they had almost right at 100 tech cars right, on right, Thursday, right. which that's huge, man. But you know, that's, that's again, that's, that's, that's truly a blessing For to sure. have that kind of support, you know, mm -hmm. to where people want to come and race with us. Mm -hmm. You know, because the thing is, it's always been Texas is so far. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard to get people from all over the world, you know, That's all over the United States yeah. to Texas. That was always the narrative. Man, can't, you can't get them. You can't get them. They're not going to travel here. They're not going to travel here. You know, yeah. then they started traveling here. You know, we got people that come race with us from from California, which I don't think you can drive no further than that. Mm -hmm. You know, we and, yeah. and it's not just people. We have a bunch of people who come from California to race with us. And the yeah. crazy thing is, we not only have people that come from California to race with us. You know, two of my most favorite racers, the Curses, Brandon and April. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sonic and and Shadow. Yeah, Shadow. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. They bought a house in Texas. Don't rent it out. Don't do anything. They stay only at that house when they race with us. You know, like, if that's not commitment and true support of what a person is doing, then I don't know what is. I, I noticed, like, you on know, every shirt you got, you putting them two on there. One of those two on there. One of those two. Those are yeah. two of my favorite people in this sport, in right. this world because of the support they have showed me and this genuine support. You right. know, it's not a, what can you do for me type mm. of support. It's real genuine support from great people. Right, and right. No matter what I'm doing, where, I, where I'm doing it at, I know they, they will come. support me. Like, no questions asked. No, they don't look for no, you know, but hey, can you do this for me? Hey, can you do that? They don't. Right, right, they right. just come and want to support me and they want to race. And those two people I'll cherish forever. That's a good thing, bro. Because, um, man, and I ain't trying to drift off on me, bro. But I got, I get, I got people, two people that support me behind the scene more than anybody, bro. Right. And usually when they support me, they I run their logo or give them a picture or give them a video or something right. like that. They right. say, bro, I don't want none of that. We just want you to keep doing what you do. Exactly. You know what I'm you saying? Know, so I feel you on that, yeah, bro. They're, like, not, they're not looking for anything in return. Yeah. You know, they just genuinely want to see you do well. Right. You right. know, and in today's world, you don't get a lot of that. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't get a lot of that from people to where you have genuine people who just basically want to see you succeed in life, mm -hmm. succeed in doing what you do, you know, 
and if they can support you during your journey, they're going to do whatever they can. They just want to be a part of it. They, That's they, it. They, they, <laughs> they love this shit. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I love them for that. Man, um, one thing that I want to touch on too, bro, that COVID race was big, dog. Yeah, it was. That was like, how did you pull that out? Because at the time, I don't know how it was down here if I was in Mississippi at the time. And I want to give a salute to you, though, too, bro. Uh, you, real estate, which I don't do anymore. I was, but you, real estate, and Quentin, uh, Lookout, y'all were the main reason why I moved down here, bro. Right. But Because after that race, I was like, bro, I'm moving down here. Right. And about two years later, I stayed up, stacked up my bread, and I got down here, bro. So. Right. I want to, man, appreciate you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, how did you, everything was shut down, bro, at the well, time. Right, that particular race. So, how did you pull that off, bro? Yeah, that particular race, you know, I was kind of not doing anything at that particular time. Mm-hmm. You know, I had did the Memphis thing, but then they was closing down and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But that particular race, I had knew that I wanted to eventually do something back home. Didn't close. So... Obviously, the next, you know, thing in line was Extreme Raceway, who mm-hmm. Galen was the pretty much the, the manager of the place. Mm-hmm. And I've known Galen my whole life. We're like family. You know, our relationship is way bigger than racing, always will be way bigger than racing. You know, I hit him up and like, like was like, Galen, it's time, let's do something. You know, we discussed it and it didn't take long to to discuss it, mm-hmm. and I started promoting. So I started promoting, then COVID hit. But it was at that point to where at first, they hadn't shut anything down. Mm-hmm. So okay. as we going along, going along, I'm talking to Galen. I mean, we getting close to the race. We probably got 50 races locked in. I said, Galen, what you think? He said, yeah, we should be fine. Okay, so we should study going, study going. And then, you know, the city have a press conference saying everything closing. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, shh. So at that point, we had to postpone. We postponed six months later. You know, I definitely wasn't looking forward to that, but that's only the date available, mm-hmm. which it turns out to be a blessing because sure. now it ended up to where I had a race in September, and then after that race was so successful, it was only natural. I was like, you know, hey, let's do it again. Let's just keep that original March weekend that we had, mm-hmm. and we can do two races a year. So that's kind of how that whole thing played out. Like six months later, they opened the city back up. Mm-hmm. We did the race, huge race. Bro, it was, I mean, huge you know, race. It was crazy. You know, we we got to bus people in. We had no more parking. They parking on the service <coughs> road. You know, like we was at capacity. That race flooded. Bunch of great racing, man. I'm talking about some yeah. legendary grudge races. Now you, nah, I want to say just and legendary man. moments, bro. Yeah, like the grudge racing too, but moment. You yeah. had Bodie. Yeah. yeah, that's when the whole Street Outlaws came yeah, over here. Bodie, Cali, I mean, they had. Bro, we did some big tire racing. You know, we bro. don't do big tire racing at all, pretty much no more. Really? We had some big tire racing that featured quite a few. Street Outlaws, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah, Bodie played a big role in getting so many Cali cars here, and to this day, most of them are still coming. Yeah, to the races. Are we talking years later? You know, they're still coming and racing with us. Yeah, bro, it's it's cool to like throw a race and have a crowd that's steady, follow your movement, coming to support you and everything. Right. And then I think. Man, was that the is it was that the race J.R. Gray and Sunshine race? Or was that was that yep. after? No, that was, was that race. That was that race. That when they raced that Friday night, bro. That yep. was a, they raced twice. Yep, twice. Yep, that was that was yep. another. Again, that was another. At and, that particular time, that was probably the biggest small block nitrous race. Yeah, for sure. you know, in grudge racing. That in. I want to say it's kind of up there with Jr. Gray and Mario too. That particular in, race in a, was. In a, in a I mean, way. because Jr. Small Block Nitrous wise, obviously was the man. You know, he mm-hmm. he's gonna always be willing to race. He's gonna always be willing to go. 
you know. So naturally, as soon as we push the race to September, them boys probably locked in probably that May for mm -hmm. months in advance. Like mm -hmm. everyone knew that race needed to happen, you know. But Jr. came here and not only race Justin. Jr. probably had five grudge races that weekend, mm -hmm. and you just don't go anywhere for a car of that caliber and race five times sure. in a weekend. You only get that at certain races, mm -hmm. and you know. And obviously, you know, I'm fortunate enough to say I have that race. You know, I have that race to give them the platform to race like that because. That race with Justin and Jr. Black Sunshine versus Jason X was a huge yeah, was race, yeah, was you know, and just the atmosphere and how it all unfolded, you know, was just it was just it was it was epic and legendary, because some people thought Justin wasn't gonna race because he spun, and then he made a, a little half pass, but Justin pushed his shit out there and said, "Yeah, I'm gonna race," and they raced for a lot of money. Twice. Twice. Yeah, they got back in the paint. Yeah, absolutely. It was he was racing, man. It was it was, it was, a, it was a beautiful race. But like I say, they had so many races that weekend, man. Like it was just like crazy grudge racing wise, mm -hmm. and they had a lot of epic, legendary grudge races that weekend. A lot of them. Yeah, your your catalog is crazy, Jay. For real. Hey, so, um, so the bear shit only. Are you go actually do the bear shit only? With a hundred thousand dollars in March and September. Yep. I, I, oh. I, I basically want to create a scenario where I got the exact same race two times a year. Okay. So you you're know. not gonna keep it just on the September. Nah, I'm gonna okay. do it March and September. You know, the only difference is on this one, I won't do a second chance race. Okay. Okay. You know, the winner gonna receive mm -hmm. everything. Whereas it could be potentially one hundred fifty thousand to win, you know, mm -hmm. if you get to a certain amount of cars, it could potentially be one hundred fifty thousand to win. Because I've had a sponsor already step up and say they want to put their five thousand with my twenty thousand on top of our entries, Damn. you know. So that in itself, as long as you have at least thirty two cars, mm -hmm. you know, it'll be one hundred five thousand to win. So, yeah. like, we're already at the point to where we have stepped up our game to where it'll be more money to win in March. And I'm, and, and people forgetting, you didn't just give away 100000 bro. You gave away it, over 170000 It was a lot of money that yeah. we gave away this past weekend. Yeah, people keep forgetting, you know, bro. It's not just a hundred. It was a hundred. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of money yeah. that exchanged hands this past weekend, mm -hmm. you know. On top of the big time grudge races that we had, mm -hmm. where money exchanged hands, you know, it was a lot of it was a lot of great racing this past weekend. And for me, for us, you know, us meaning me and Dominique, you know, we think we sit, you know, and think, hey, how do we get this thing even better? Mm -hmm. You know, how do we make it yeah, even how? more interesting? Yeah. And like I say, we have people step up like immediately. After this race, and say, man, I love what you're doing. You know, I got five thousand dollars. I want to pull with yours to make mm -hmm. this race even better. And that's where that's we are right thing. now. Man, I think Friday night, bro. Y'all should have like a eight car. I'll still all glass shoot up. Get eight of the baddest. Well, you well, you got an all still all glass class. I mean, so, it's it's funny so. you say that because me and Dominique, we talked about that exact thing. See, what I'm saying. We, Bro, we that, want we want look, to get the eight baddest the off eight. the all-glass cars for Friday night at that and let them go at it. Yeah, at that time, bro. Right. I feel like, That's I mean, the, the all still out glass class is good for that Friday, but I'm not a promoter, Jay. I'm just thinking as a yeah. content creator, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be cool if you get, like, Austin Pruitt, which I'm sure he's still going to be all still out glass. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm sure. Brandon, of yeah. course, he go. Uh, that that boy from Florida, uh, Erk. Aaron, Aaron yeah. Hall Halloween or yeah. Halloween, whatever. Yeah, he's fast. Yeah, yeah, he's fast car. And Sean. And, you know, find four more other just yeah, killers. It, it's, oh, it's, it's, I mean, it's some cars out right there. Bam yeah. Bam. Bam Bam. Uh, I, mean, I mean, Junkie fast, you know. Junkie, like, it's, that's it's, six. It's, it's, we, we, got, we ain't going to let every car out of the bag. But we got an idea of who we feel is the baddest. We don't right. know who's the fastest. Yeah. You know, but we 
because we know time race. Right, so right, right. We we feel like we can get a group of eight, mm -hmm. you know, together to where we can let them go to war and then just see who come out on top. Yeah, because I, I mean, then then y'all can just and I mean, I'm just a content creator, Jay. I ain't yeah, gonna, you're free you, thinking. You, you, I mean, yeah. you just kind of you know, you yeah, kind of think. Y'all y'all name it, you know, whatever y'all want to name, like bear shit only, like y'all got it now, all mm. still out glass, get eight of the baddest, John Wayne, J D Camp well I don't know J D Camp, I don't know. He's a small block, but he's a bad small block. Yeah, he's uh, bad. like I said, the, the six we just named and get two more, John Wayne, that's seven, get one more and let them just battle that yeah. Friday night, finish that. And then, like you said, had a bear shit. I only do two, was it two or three rounds that Friday? I do three rounds and three rounds. Yeah. That's that's three that's three. our plan. Right. You know, that's our plan going forward. That'll be, that'll be, that'll be dope, Jay. Yeah, I ain't 100%. Lie. Yeah. I ain't like, lie. It's, that's the thing. For me personally, man, just as soon as I'm done with a race, I immediately turn the table and think, how can I make it better? So you, so yeah. you're not, you're not complacent. You just, I you never, trying. I never be complacent. That's like, that's like even with, that hundred thousand dollar grudge race, you know, we lost. Yeah, I was over it the same night personally, yeah. because I have won a lot of grudge races, for big sure, ones. For sure, for sure. You know, I would say I probably won ninety to ninety five percent of my grudge races. For sure. You know, if for there's sure. one thing I know how to do, I know how to grudge race. So I've won, I've lost. You know, I know how to lose, but it's not something I'm going to dwell on. Right. right I'm going right. to push forward and move the fuck on. You know, for sure, because. For sure. For me, I'll be ready to go again soon. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's 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 not a big deal to me. You know, of course you want to win every single race that you, you know, that you entertain, that you that you you know that you get up and race. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you're not gonna win them all. And I can you say know? that was probably like the. I don't know how much the Mario and Jason X was, but that was the biggest grudge race in history, huh? That one was. That this, one, this race yeah. this past weekend definitely 100% right. was. That was the biggest grudge race. So damn, Jay, you made history. 100%. 100% that was the biggest race. You know, and that's yeah. nothing against nobody else. Yeah, or yeah, no yeah. disrespect. It's the, it's the because it, it's, it was other big races. That's one of them in particular. But this one this past weekend was the biggest one. And, you know, what makes it so gratifying is the fact that they raced like a motherfucker. Them two, they was tied together. Like, you know, with a string going down through there. They was holding hands. Not for sure. You know, for sure. like, for sure. it was a hell of a race. That's that's what I was seeing on my live you know, feed. Yeah, bro. that was a hell of a yeah. fucking race that them two had. Like, and kudos to both of them. Especially sure. Justin. He won. Can't for take sure. nothing from him. They came down here and did exactly what they said they was going to do. But as far as that one particular race, mm -hmm. it was huge. And I'm and, glad and both of them made Exactly. True. They're going to talk about their race for years yeah. to come. Nah, for sure. You know, it wasn't where sure. somebody... Gap somebody because there was no gap. There was no nobody drug anybody. Nobody drug nobody. That was mm -hmm. just a hell of a drag race, and that's For what real. we lost. We lost a drag race. No more, no less. You can't even get mad. You lost, nah, bro. Cause, I mean, bro, it was just, he just yeah. They was he a just had man more power. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Bottom bro. line, they was a better man today. And, yeah. And for me personally, I and listen, and I can and I can speak for bro too. Like, it's over with. It's done. Yeah. We lost, you know, yeah. but we will be back. For sure. And that's the thing, like, I try to explain to him. As far as this bear shit only shit, you know, it only gets better. You don't got to chase anybody. Mm -hmm. People's going to chase that title. For sure. For being the biggest bear in the goddamn world. For sure. You will see any and all of these cars again. You will get your opportunity. Just make mm -hmm. the most of it next time. For sure, for sure. And